I'm grateful, Allah the sustainer. For since I'm remorseful, Allah the forgiver. For blessings I'm hopeful, Allah the bestower. Gracious and merciful, Allah the creator. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد The subject of principles of faith and we are discussing توحيد and today we discuss one of the meanings of توحيد or oneness of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that is Tawheed in Ibadah or Tawheed in worshipping. We do worship Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we worship only one, not more than one. And the matter looks well very apparent and clear, but when we come to details we see that how uh, certain mistakes or misunderstanding happens about uh, meaning of worshipping or worshipping itself um, and how sometimes unknowingly we may worship other than God thinking that we are worshipping God. To start with, naturally we um, worship, I mean everybody by his innate understand that to worship, to worship Almighty God. Uh, there is one God and we worship Him. And in our daily prayers, we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ we, we worship you and we take help and support from you. The only one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is naturally very uh, clear and known. Uh, but before we go into uh, certain other uh, problems of worshipping, uh, knowingly or unknowingly and maybe accusations of worshipping other than God for certain practices, we need to know what is the definition of worshipping. When you say ibadah, do not worship other than God. If you worship other than God, then you are not believing in one God, believing in two or three, and that's what we call shirk. Uh, so what is the worship? Uh, the worship, if we go to the language, uh, they said Muntaha al the maximum humiliation toward someone uh, or just humiliation and maximum uh, submission to someone is called worshipping him but that definition is not really uh, correct and not exact uh, first of all uh, we know from the Holy Quran that Almighty God asked the uh, angels to bow and prostrate in front of a prophet Adam, peace be upon him. And naturally God will not ask the angels to prostrate in front of anybody other than him. He will not ask Malaika to do shirk. That is impossible. So not every prostration uh, can be regarded as shirk. Uh, that is one. The second one about Prophet Yusuf salam, Joseph. Uh, we know from his story in the Holy Quran uh, that at the end of his life when his father and brothers came and while he was king in Egypt, uh, he put his parents on the throne and his brothers all bowed in prostration. sujada. They did prostration sujood. Well, sujood, of course, is a a very apparent way for worshipping. To worship Almighty God, we go into complete prostration on the floor. So uh, that they did for Yusuf alayhi salam. And naturally that cannot be shirk because uh, he is a prophet. His father was, Yaqub was a prophet. And how come a prophet agrees that his sons do a state of shirk 
and believe that he is uh, to be worshipped like God. Surely that is impossible. So we, we here realize that the literal meaning or the dictionary meaning uh, of maximum uh, humiliation or prostration or submission towards somebody is regarded as worshipping is not really exact. So there must be some better definition uh, so that we understand it in a right way. And if we apply it, we have to apply it in the right way. When we read the Holy Quran, when he talks about shirk of different people, the, those idol worshippers or star and um, other uh, things that the worshippers, uh, we come to uh, different uh, ways the Holy Quran regard them as mushrikeen believe in more than one God. Uh, one of them, for those who believe someone to be a divine God. Now I say divine God because God in English is not really equal to Allah. God actually equal to Rabb, which is better I translated as Lord Rabb in order to differentiate Lord from God, God for Allah and Lord for Rabb. And there is a difference in the meaning, you know. Allah really cannot be translated in any language because that is a unique word in Arabic, has no translation. But capital G, God in English, it, in its meaning equal to Allah, you know, when you put capital G. If you use goddess for that, let us say, head of the uh, village or state or other, they do not put with capital, they write it with a small g. So let us say God with capital G, or what you say, Allah, or Ilah, the God, or the uh, divine God, let us say, to worship someone believing that he is a divine God. That is one type of worshiping, yes. The Holy Quran also mentions that about the people of Mecca. Because people of Mecca used to believe that there is God. But they used to understand that not only one God, he said that big God is there and there are small gods. So they used to worship the small gods and big God, and each God they used to believe is useful for fulfilling certain needs of the people. So they worship all of them. So that is why they believe he is God, he is a divine God, but there is a big God and a small God. Um, when we come to the um, Holy Quran, uh, the Quran mentions about that. Said, "Alladina yajaluna ma Allahi ilahan akhar, fasaufa yaglamun." In Surah Al-Hajr, Ayah 96, said, "Those who make with with Allah another god, and they will know. I mean, they will know at, at the end the the bad thing they." Uh, or in another ayah in Surah Maryam, ayah 81, وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ آلِهَةً لِيَكُونُ لَهُمْ عِزَّةً They took other than Allah, gods, in order to get power from them, or they will have a might with them. So other than Allah, there was other gods they have taken. And in Surah Al-An'am, ayah 19, أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَشْهَدُونَ أَنَّ مَعَ اللَّهِ آلِهَةً أُخْرَى um, You are verily witness that beside Allah there are other gods there. Beside God with capital G there are other gods with a small g. So that is where they believe of certain people uh, because they believe uh, that there are other gods. And when they worship them with that intention, naturally they are worshipping other than God. I mean, he are worshipping with the belief of being a divine God. That is one part of the definition of ibadah, worshipping. So we say not all types of humiliation, or not all type of submission, no but if we hum show our humiliation and, and a prostration or submission towards someone with the belief that he has a divine nature, he is 
uh, God, then that is called we are worshiping Him. But only uh, uh, respect or maximum respect does not mean if I do not believe He is God. For example, the parents may respect, uh, the children may respect their parents very much. They may kiss hand of the mother, for example. Kissing hand is a humiliation, prostration in front of the mother. But he does not believe the mother is uh, God for him. So that is not worshipping, though it is showing humiliation. The lover may show his humiliation. He may kiss even the house, the door of the loved one. Uh, that is maximum humiliation. Sometimes he uh, kiss the floor in which uh, his lover is moving on just to show his love, but he does not believe his lover is God. So humiliation is there, but there is no intention, no understanding, no belief that is God, so that is not worshipping. But if you show his humiliation toward the um, other one with the belief that he is God, Allah, then that is shirk, of course. So the people of Mecca, when we go to the ayahs, actually one type of the mushrikeen was that they believe other than Almighty God, there are small gods, and they have their effect to uh, benefit or to harm the people, so they used to worship them. And the Holy Quran uh, asked them not to do that because that is wrong, and there is only one God, always. Ilahan wahadan, there is only one God. So, um, for example, in the ayah in Surah al Tur, ayah 43, uh, he put it in a question Am lahum ilahun ghayrullah, subhanallah, amma yashirkun. Do they have another God beside Almighty Allah? Uh, glorified be Allah of what shirk, what duality they uh, relate to God. So they relate a partner for him, but glorified be he, glorified means he cannot have another God. So we glorify him from uh, being weak to need another God or another God to be there with him. So that is a subhanallah. No, subhan is tanzih. Tanzih means we remove all types of impurities from God. And there, if there is another God, there are limitations and there is a need as we say it, for time, for space, for limits. So that means God is weak. Now we said no, we glorify our Lord that, or our God that he is not so weak to need uh, space and time because there is another one like him, you know. So that is why I say subhanallah, means, that is tanzi. Tanzi means removing impurities from Almighty Allah and that the belief by itself is uh, not a right belief. Uh, and so on, you know, uh, so many uh, ayahs is like that. Uh, in Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 59, Ya qawmi abudu allaha ma lakum min ilahin ghayruh. Now, their prophet used to tell them, oh, the people worship Allah, there is no God other than Him. So here, they should not believe in other things to be God. Now, whether idols, or whether stars, or sun, or moon, or fire, or whatever, they used to believe. He said, no, there is no other God. God is only one. So, uh, the first um, definition, as we said, for worshipping, we say, uh, prostration or humiliation or submission with words or with a practice. Sometimes you submit by word or sometimes you by practice, by your deeds. In uh, all these situations, in front of someone with the belief that he is God, not generally. If I do not believe he is God, then it is not worshipping. That is one. The second Definition is also submission or humiliation toward someone, whether humiliation by saying, by tongue, or humiliation by doing, by practice, that we believe he has 
ability to give us sustenance or to help us or to support us in this world or in the hereafter independent of God. So someone, if we believe that, and these are actually the meanings for Rab, the Lord. What is meaning Rab? Rab, you Rabbi. From bringing up, when you bring up the children, you take care of them, take care of their psychology, their physiology, their anatomy, their needs, sleeping, food, protection. You, you take care of all aspects. So there is one God created according to them, and they said, yes, the creator is almighty Allah. But the sustainer and the one who look after us is not almighty Allah, but these idols. So they are our Lord. The Lord is different and the creator is different according to uh, people of Mecca or well, some in Hindu or other religions, you know. So they put a difference between the creator who is almighty God and between the sustainer or the one who helps them or give them uh, their sustenance or support in any way, they said, well, he is our Lord. God is there, but he is our Lord. The benefit will come from him as a Lord and naturally that is independent of Almighty God. So that is, if we humiliate ourselves toward them, with that belief that he can help me, can be useful to me or can be harmful to me in this world or in the hereafter, independent of God, no, that is type of worshipping. But if I believe that he helped me or may harm me, not independent of God, then that is not worshipping. And what's practically we do? I am afraid of the enemy because I believe the enemy will harm me but not independent of God. God, if you want, you can stop him. But okay, God, out of his wisdom, he allowed the people, he gave them freedom, fine. But not that God cannot. God is independent himself. So he can stop him from doing any harm to me. Well, I work hard in order to get my salary and food and live, you know. Not that believing the, my boss will give me money uh, independent of God. So I say, well, if I go and respect him or I show humiliation in front of him, that I believe independent of Almighty Allah, he can give me my sustenance. No, that is not the belief. If that is the belief, yes. I am worshipping my boss like worshipping God because I think this person, because he is rich or he has money or he is a head of a company, and he can himself, even without, whether God want or doesn't want, make no difference. He can do harm to me or can give me my sustenance or prevent that. Then I will die of hunger. Uh, so that, of course, any humiliation with that belief is worshipping. So one should not. You see, these are type of, we call a shirk al-khafi, the hidden type of shirk. The frank type that there is another God, two gods, well, rarely people got that idea. But believe in effect of people that might happen to some. And that is so delicate that as we said before, if you believe the water will relieve your thirst independent of God, that is type of shirk. You see? Even the water, independent of God, a type of shirk. There is no independent power other than Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else is dependent on Him. So, I mean, of course, that in creation we discussed it, but uh, what I mean in worshipping, if I am humiliating in front of anyone, in front of the king, in front of the... Um, okay, I humiliate because I fear he will hurt me by permission of God, fine, that is not shirk. But if I think he's independent, whether Allah want or doesn't want, he can harm me or can benefit me, then that is shirk. And sometimes, unfortunately, the people, when they are in need, and they go to someone and they think he is 
fully able financially or as a position or um, whatever situation he has, uh, then that they got that misunderstanding that Mr. So and so will help me and he can do it because he is able, he is generous, he is rich. And naturally, uh, if I ask him for something because he is generous and rich, he will give me right away and so on. So I will think that independent of Almighty God, he can do that. And that is, so it's a type of shirk, which sometimes the people are not aware of it. They don't know it is shirk. They think, well, it is okay, because naturally, well, I got, yes, we believe in cause and effect. We believe the rich people are made by Almighty Allah as a cause to, suppose, help the poor people, for example, or the needy people. We believe the doctor was given a knowledge by Allah to treat the illness of the patients, no doubt. But I should not believe that independent of God, he will do it. I say, yeah, God asked me to seek a doctor if I am sick. I am going to the doctor, but my God, I know the doctor may do a mistake, maybe not good, or his medicine may not suit my mood and my physiology. So many people took medicine and they were not cured. So the curing in your hand, but still you put the cure in hand of this doctor so that he diagnosed my disease in the right way and you allow the medicine to be useful for me. So still my humiliation is to Allah, not to the doctor. Okay, I may respect the doctor, I may take care of him in order to look after me. But that not in the belief that, well, he is a great doctor and he is the only one in the world who can help me. No, that is not, not correct and not a true belief. He is the only one who can. There is Allah behind all and he can help or can take help. Actually, in medical practice, we have seen this. And I have heard it from many colleagues in, in medical practice. They said, if somebody we know come to us, always at time of a treatment, there are complications. And we feel ashamed from him that he is a relative, he is a friend, dear friend, and he come to us, and I want to help him, but there will be always complications. You know, some dentists say that, that if a, a known person come to me and I have to treat, then his, uh, his teeth, he will get complication and will get ashamed. These complications are not happening with ordinary people. Ordinary people come, it is all right, I treat them and easily. But when they are relatives or friends or known to me, complications are happening. And that is a phenomenon, I heard it from many doctors. I myself practice it also. But then the answer of some, the explanation, they said that probably the patient who, is, who doesn't know the doctor, in his heart he say, oh my God, I have no way except to go to this, where to go now? I am going. So you help me, at least the doctor will give me good medicine. So in his heart he trusts Almighty Allah, not really the doctor. He go to the doctor because no other material way. But ultimately he believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While if he is a friend or relative, say, oh, I don't care, well, this is my relative and he will take care of me, there will be no problem and everything is all right and uh, everything is done properly and naturally he will look after me very well. So he trusts the doctor, not trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will show him that, okay, trust the doctor, see how much complications are there and you cannot help it, you know. He said to trust Allah always is the right thing. Otherwise, it is type, as we said, as shirk al-khafi. The show in our deeds is called also a hidden type of shirk. I do it for sake of God and for sake of people. I build a mosque for sake of God, but then the people also should praise me that I am a good man, I built a mosque. So it becomes shirk, God and the people. Well, not 100% pure for God. And that is type of shirk also. But it is a hidden type of shirk, not a frank type of shirk. Well, many people fall in that, unfortunately. They do something for sake of show. Now, very difficult to do something 100% for sake of Almighty God. Maybe 1% for sake of people, 99% for sake of God. But to be purely for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
you need to be very strong in your faith and in your uh, morality to and piety to believe in, in God and do it 100% for sake of Almighty Allah. So you see that is type of shirk. You see too. And in the tradition we have, they said, Almighty God say, Ana or I am the best of the partners. Whatever done for me and for others, because others become partner, I will give all my share to others. So it was 99% for Almighty God, 1% for people. Allah said, I will give my 99 to the people. So nothing will go to God. All will go to people. Because Almighty God will accept only a pure things for his sake, not mixed with others. So if mixed, the others are partner with me. So let all my share go to them. So you see, it is type of shirk. Believe in two, not in one. We do for sake of two, not sake of one. So these are, you know, the ways that we should not go wrong. So now, humiliation which will happen automatically, you know, in front of strong people, rich people. Uh, naturally, that happens, you know. Somebody, maybe uh, um, you need him, or maybe you are afraid of him, or if he's a dictator or so on. Uh, you might anyhow respect him too much so to get rid of his uh, uh, harm or tyranny. But if you believe he can do harm to you other than God, then that is shirk. But if you believe, no, but Almighty God, he allowed things to happen in the natural way and he can harm you but also with the permission of God, because God gave freedom to good and bad people in order to test what they do in this world. So this is not shirk. So you are afraid of him, you might show humiliation to get rid of his oppression, but you do not believe he is independent. So you see, those who help you, sometimes in a tradition, they said the children, when they are a small child, if you promise a child, you fulfill your promise. Because the children believe you are their God, your Lord. Because you are the mother, the father are looking after the children. So the children see if they need money, the mother, the father. If they need food, the father. If they need to go outside, the father, the mother. So the parents are taking care of them fully. So the children believe you are Lord for them. You fulfill whatever you promise. Uh, but when they grow, of course, they will understand that you are doing it for them by permission of Almighty God. So what I mean, taking care of someone, if one believes that he can do it independently, that is, meaning he is worshipping him as God. But if I look after people who took care of me, I respect them, but not in the sense that I believe they help me independently, then that is belief, proper belief, and that is not belief that they are God. So this is the, the second meaning, and uh, of course there are uh, many uh, ayahs uh, in the Quran. Uh, for example, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 72, وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبِّكُمْ the Messiah said to uh, children of Israel that worship my Lord and your Lord. So he used word, not my God and your God, my Lord. He used, so you believe in Almighty God as God, but you may not believe that he is the Lord. But here the prophet Jesus is stressing that worship uh, Almighty God who is my Lord and your Lord. And um, in another uh, ayah in Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah 92, إِنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا وَأَنَا رَبُّكُمْ فَاعْبُدُونَ This ummah, this community is one community, the Muslim community is one, and I am your Lord. So worship me. So Almighty God said, I am your Lord here. He was not, I am your God that is used in another way. But here, beside God, he used, I am your Rabb, 
Lord, أنا ربكم all in another ayah in Surah Al-Imran, ayah 51 إن الله ربي وربكم فاعبدوه هذا صراط مستقيم Verily, God is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him. This is a straight path. So the Prophet used to tell the people that Almighty God is my Lord and your Lord. So here, worshiping in belief that everything in hand of the Lord, God as a Lord, everything in his hand, not in hand of somebody else who look after me or uh, take care of me. The only one is Almighty God. And the third one, the third definition, the third way is we call ibadah, is humiliation in front of uh, someone who believes that he is not, he is dependent on his life and his needs toward someone who believes is independent completely. So we believe no one is independent or self-dependent except Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we believe somebody is independent completely, so that means we are doing shirk. The only one independent is Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have anybody independent other than Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I show my humiliation or my maximum submission or prostration towards someone and I believe he is independent than God. Not as a Lord, but he's he's independent. He's special personality and uh, he can do whatever he wants, has nothing to do with God. If I believe that about him, means I believe he is God and I am worshipping him. Because we said the only independent or self subsistent as we say is Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no one self subsistent in the world except Almighty God. So anyone in his existence and in continuation of his existence and in ability that he has, all are controlled by Almighty Allah. We cannot imagine anyone that he has any independence in any way. It's not possible. The only independent is Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that uh, is mentioned in certain uh, ayahs of the Holy Quran pointing to this uh, one like in uh, Ayat al-Kursi in Surah al-Baqarah Ayah 255 Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum Allah there is no God other than him he is the all living and qayyum is the self persistent who has the might and control so he is the only one who is self persistent in another ayah in Surah Taha, Ayah 111, وَعَنَتِ الْوُجُوهُ لِلْحَيِّ الْقَيُّومِ So all the faces, all the people have got humiliation toward the all living and all subsistent. Since Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the only one. As we said, all the positive attributes will come under one, and that is He is self-subsistent. Uh, and the rest are from from that will come. So that is another one. So to combine all that, uh, I mean, this way that we believe, uh, or some believe that others may be independent, actually it was belief of some people of Mecca, or maybe also an Indian, an old Indian or others, that the angels are independent. That what is called tafwil. Tafwil means giving authority to others to do independently. The word tafwil, giving authority. So Almighty God gave authority fully to the angels and angels can do whatever they want independent of God. That is of course shirk, not possible. So some of the, uh, let's say, old Arabs or some and, and other 
followers of other religions before Islam, maybe till today there are people, believe that, okay, Almighty God is the creator, we know. And Almighty God is the sustainer. He is God and He is Rabb, both Lord and God. But He gave full authority to others, like the angels. So we worship the angels because they have full authority and they can do whatever they want. So you see, that is the third section we say no. There is no one getting full authority. Actually, authority of God is not transferable. So there are certain authorities are transferable. Certain authorities are not transferable. How? The authority which stand by the self cannot be transferred. I give an example for, war, for um, ownership. If I own a house and I owe myself, myself, I am the owner of myself, and I am owner of my house, both are owned by me. Ownership of my house is a relative ownership. I can sell the house, no problem, nothing will happen to me. But can I sell myself? Then nothing will remain. So certain things I cannot sell, I cannot transfer. You see? So those who are relative, which are relative things, possible. Now authority of Almighty God is not relative. Is by the, everything is standing by Almighty God. So he give power of independence to others, impossible. There will be, there will be two gods, you know. We say not possible. So the authority of God, uh, not possible to be tran transferred to others as an independent, of course. A dependent, fine. Everything is dependent on God. And, Everything is authorized by God to help. Even the water authorized by God to relieve my thirst. We see, independently to work is impossible. Because that is part of Almighty God's essence. That he is self-subsistent. If he is self-subsistent, he cannot transfer that to others. You know, not possible. Otherwise, others will be like we said, God, can he create another God like him? So that is not possible. Another God like him. So those who believe the angels or others or maybe Satan can harm the people <coughs> as some, they worship Satan because they think that he can harm us independent of God. So we worship him to get rid of his harm, you know. Well, let's believe of some people. Whatever it is, see all that we regard it, we say that is shirk. Because you said the only independent being is Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything else including the angels, the prophets, the imams, the saints, and the good people, the uh, scientific people, the doctors, everybody is, may do good or bad to you, but by permission of God, not independently. So now to summarize this, we say the definition of ibadah is humiliation toward someone with the belief that he is God, or he is Lord, or he is independent in his actions. That is worshipping. But if I humiliate towards someone without belief that he is God, and without belief that he is Lord, and without belief that he is independent in his action, whatever maximum humiliation I show, that is not ibadah, not worshipping him. And we see the example of uh, Prophet Joseph or Yusuf alayhi salam when he put his parents and he sat in the throne and his brothers prostrated for him. That is maximum humiliation to prostrate in front of someone but that is not regarded as ibadah because they do not believe he is God. But they respect him, they love him and they did that as respect. So we come to other issue, what the Muslims are doing, Muslims as Shias and Sunnis, that they go and visit the holy shrines of the Prophet or the Imams, uh, that does not mean it is shirk. Even if they touch the shrine for a blessing, or kiss the ground, or kiss the 
um, uh, what you call the dharih, the um, uh, window around the grave, or pray for Almighty God to rak at there, uh, and ask the Imam to ask Allah to fulfill their needs. That is, none of them is shirk, because none of the Muslims believe that the Prophet is God or Lord or independent in helping the people. No. So he is having a great position in front of Almighty God and he is able to help me. He is actually one of the doors of a blessing of God to people. One of the symbols of mercy of God is his prophet and the descendants of the prophet. The Holy Quran says about the Prophet, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you but a mercy for the words. So he is mercy for the words. And he is mercy whether he is alive or whether he is dead. It is not right what the Wahhabi says that if the Prophet is dead, then the dead has no value and is not effective at all. No, that is not true. Still, after death, the life of Barzakh is there, and actually the Prophet or the Imams, they can ask Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will reply. However, whether what we do is useful or not useful is something else. But that at least is not shirk. Okay, suppose for sake of argument, that is wrong. The Prophet cannot help me after his death. Okay, he will not help me. I go to a doctor and doctor cannot treat me. That does not mean it is shirk. So what I mean, it is shirk if I believe he is independent of God. And there is no Muslim who believes that the Prophet can help independent of Almighty God. Say, so, well, you have a great position with God, so please help me. Like you tell rich people that you have a great uh, uh, risk and money given to you by God, so please help me. So that is not shirk and not a belief of independency. So what abuse is there uh, in the media and that the uh, Sufi Muslims, Sunni Muslims who do visit the shrines of the Holy Prophet or the Imams or the Shias, when they go and visit the shrine of the Holy Prophet, sometimes touch the, uh, the grave by hand or kiss the grave as expression of love, that does not mean it is shirk, no. It is a pure faith because none of them believes that he is God, nor he is Lord, and nor he is independent in his actions. So if you do not believe that, actually by definition, uh, that is not shirk. Now, as I said, whether it is useful or not useful, that is another story. We believe it is useful, and we have seen thousands of miracles done by them. If somebody doesn't believe, up to him, but at least that is not shirk. You know. Those who say it is shirk, actually they do not know the real meaning of Tawheed. See, always the problem of the people, they are weak in Tawheed, and they say, we are the follower of Tawheed. No, they are not followers, they are ignorant of Tawheed. Unfortunately, and still they said, no, everybody else is mushrik except us. They don't know that they themselves are ignorant and they need to be educated about it. They do not know the meanings of the ayahs of the Quran and their wrong explanation is what brings them to the wrong side. You know, their explanation is not right. The real meaning of worshiping is when we believe he is God or Lord or independent and none of that is done by the practice of the Muslims when they go to Medina for example to visit the holy shrine of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and try to express their love to kiss the grave of now he came the here is the grave of the prophet is to kiss that kissing okay it is part of let us say humiliation or expression of respect and that but that is not as we said, not every humiliation and respect is worshipping. Worshipping is different and respect is something else. So that is in short about the belief in oneness of God 
and oneness in worshipping that we worship only Almighty God, nobody else to be worshipped with different uh, meanings of worshipping. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-Tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alihi Muhammad.